With a name like Shank, there aren't many respectable lines of work to make a living. The titular star of this gory side-scrolling beat-em-up lives up to his vicious moniker, slaying an endless stream of attackers with his razor-sharp blades and assortment of deadly guns. Stylish, over-the-top combat is the foundation for this bloody hack-and-slash adventure, and the simple fisticuffs do a fine job of scratching that brutal itch. But niggling control issues hamper the fun, and the few cooperative levels just make you wonder why the entire game wasn't given the two-player treatment. Even with a few missteps, Shank is a fun game that makes good use of its eye-catching visuals to hide the shallow gameplay. Look around you. This was all yours, and you piss on it. Nothing makes a man's sword sing quite like a quest for vengeance. You must kill her. Shank has been wronged by some very bad men, so you set off on an adventure to fix the many problems of the world in the only way you know how, extreme violence. The story is crass, lacks any sort of wit, and contains no empathetic characters, but it's still worth watching because of the well-designed cutscenes. There are story segments sprinkled liberally throughout the game, sometimes even in the middle of a boss fight, and it's interesting to see what sort of amoral treat will pop up next. The music is just as distinct as the visuals, but unfortunately clashes with the other elements. Its subdued and mellow nature contrasts wildly with the bloody combat, creating an odd backdrop for your killing fun. The bulk of the game consists of running down 2D corridors as you attempt to vanquish everything that moves with your many weapons. You carry a melee weapon and gun with you at all times, and you can string these together into long combos that cause the enemies to spurt gallons of blood. There are other moves as well, such as grapples, a quick pounce, and grenades, that give the combat some diversity. But even though you have a decent sized repertoire, you rarely have to put much thought into your actions. The vast majority of encounters can be won by spamming the melee attacks with an occasional blast from your gun or grenade tossed in for good measure. Because mindlessly flailing your swords is the quickest way to success, the game becomes repetitive early on. Despite the simplicity of your actions, Shank is still a satisfying beat-em-up. Enemies bleed like hemophiliacs and scream like wildebeests, which certainly gives your actions meaning. But control issues get in the way of this carefree kill fest. There is a noticeable lag between some of your button presses, which destroys the flow of combat. This is especially noticeable when trying to block. You can slam on the button repeatedly before your character responds, and that hesitation can mean the difference between life and death. Controls are especially problematic during cooperative games because contextual prompts don't always register. For instance, you press the light melee button to revive your fallen friend, but you will frequently watch your character swing their blades without bringing the dying hero back to life. These are small issues, but in a fast-paced action setting in which precision is paramount, they add up to massive amounts of frustration. The cooperative mode is completely separate from the single-player campaign. It serves as a prequel to your vengeance-fueled exploits and can only be played locally. What's really strange, though, is why two players are not allowed to team up in the main adventure. The two modes play virtually the same, so the main adventure feels rather lonely without a friend by your side. Despite this puzzling decision, Shank is at its best when you can combine your might. You still chop down your enemies with a few well-placed hacks and gun blasts, but you can also engage in some over-the-top cooperative moves. Tossing a ragdoll enemy back and forth is a sadistic joy, and it's fun to discover new ways to torture your enemies. Unfortunately, the boss fights are anything but fun cooperatively. Your hulking opponents are damaged sponges, which makes the fights tedious bouts of repetition rather than tests of skill. Thankfully, this is not the case in the single-player campaign. The bosses in this mode aren't very difficult, but they each have a unique weakness that's fun to figure out and exploit. Shank is a competent brawler with a serious sense of flair. The striking visuals and bloody combat are certainly eye-catching, and the finely crafted cutscenes give a good reward for your efforts. It's just a shame Shank's gameplay isn't able to live up to its fine aesthetics. The combat is far too simple, letting you cut through your enemies with only a handful of moves, and the controls are not always responsive, leading to unfair deaths and much frustration. Shank is still a decent entry in the long-running genre, but has too many small issues weighing it down. Yeah, we have a strict no-witness policy, ladies. Ah! 